Hello? There we go. Hello? Hello. Everybody hear me? Yeah. I got this hair. Anyway, oh, come on. I better plug this old motor in. Our internet has been questionable today. Really? Yeah, everybody working from home is having was having a bugger of a time. Logging in. No, just no. staying connected. No. It's slow, slow, slow. Oh no, please. There we go. Maybe. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, guys. Allison? Yes? Look what I just got. It uh, failed on me. My grandbaby just brought it in. Um, so I pulled up the video, and we are live streaming on YouTube. Okay, because it looked like it failed on me. Thank you very much. It doesn't say, oh, no, it doesn't say it. Yeah, mine shows live on YouTube now as well. All right, everybody set in the chambers? We are. Okay, fair enough then. I'll go ahead and call uh, the public meeting to order. Please note that this meeting will be held virtually and available for public viewing on YouTube. As part of the public participation, if you have any questions regarding items uh, on the agenda for the meeting, please submit them by email to mail at ektwp.ca. Questions received prior to the meeting will be addressed during the, the uh, question period, uh, and we hope to limit that to 15 minutes. So at this point, um, I will uh, outline uh, the nature of this public meeting. Uh, it's being held this evening under the Planning Act and involves a zoning bylaw amendment application related to the properties at 2930, 2932, and 2934 Second Concession Road Part Lot A, Concession 2, Geographic Elizabethtown. This public meeting is a separate item from tonight's regular council meeting. The procedure will be as follows. To start, the planning assistant will confirm how notice was given for the zoning amendment application. Uh, she'll then outline the proposed amendment and summarize any comments that we've received to date. After hearing from our planning assistant, the meeting will be open to anyone who may have registered a request with the administrator clerk to attend this virtual meeting to address council would ask that any persons wishing to speak on this matter uh, to please give your full name and street address for the record. Once anyone wanting to speak has been heard, the public meeting will be closed. All questions should be directed through myself as chair. So at this time, I will now ask our planning assistant to advise how notice was given to outline the application and advise of any comments received. Certainly. Uh, so in terms of uh, notification, the method of public notification for this public meeting um, was published in the Brockville and Recorder and Times. It was published on March 19th. Uh, in addition, it also appeared in the weekly edition of Brockville this week uh, for the week of March 25th. Uh, this method of notification meets the minimum requirements for giving public notification under the Planning Act. Um, it was a 20 day notice uh, requirement. Uh, in addition, prescribed agencies under the Planning Act were also circulated notice uh, and potential departments were also circulated notice of the proposed amendment. In addition to this minimum uh, requirement, uh, as per task, property owners within 120 meters, 400 feet, uh, were also given personal notice by mail of the zoning amendment of the public meeting on March 17th. 
It should be noted for anyone uh, here tonight that if anyone files a decision uh, of the township with respect to the proposed amendment and does not make, uh, which is to appeal it and does not make oral submissions at this public meeting or does not make a written submission to the township before the proposed amendment is adopted by bylaw or otherwise considered by council, then that person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of council uh, to the local planning appeals tribunal. And also that person or public body may not be added as a party uh, to a hearing of appeal by LPAT, uh, the appeals tribunal, unless the opinion of the tribunal is that they have reasonable grounds to do so. Further, as noted in the public meeting notice, if anyone wishes to be notified of the decision of council of this amendment, uh, you must make a written request of such notice to the administrator clerk of Honor Bear. So regarding the specific amendment matter before council at this public meeting, uh, the filed application proposes to amend the zoning bylaw to rezone these lands, uh, to permit and to recognize the existing development that's currently existing on the lands. Uh, this rezoning was a requested condition of severance approval of three severance applications, uh, which were B3720, B3820, uh, and B3920, which were filed under the Planning Act. Uh, these three severance applications were comprised of two lot additions and one new lot um, rezone, uh, severance. Um, and it ultimately will result in severing a residential uh, dwelling from the Hall's Orchard property. Uh, the purpose of the rezoning will also address uh, driveway and other setback deficiencies resulting from these severances. Uh, the result of the rezoning and the severances will be two separate residential lots addressed as 39, 2930 and 2932 Second Concession Road, as well as the Halls uh, Orchard commercial property at 2934 Second Concession Road. So to accomplish this intent, um, the property with the dwelling at uh, 2930 Second Concession Road will be rezoned from an RU rural zone to a special exception RU zone, and this will address the side yard setback for a pool pump shed to the new property line. Uh, the property with the dwelling at 39, 20, 2932 Second Concession Road will be rezoned from an RU rural zone and a RCR rural commercial zone to a special exception RU zone, and this will address uh, lot area, lot frontage, uh, side and rear yard setbacks to the existing dwelling, and the driveway setback to the new property line. And finally, the property with the commercial building at uh, 2934 Second Concession Road uh, will be rezoned uh, from RU Rural Zone and CR Rural Commercial Zone to a special exemption Rural Commercial Zone to address lot frontage and side yard setbacks of existing buildings and the driveway setback to the new property line. The rezoning will permit an accessory residential unit on the property, but not a detached residential dwelling to ensure that no further intensity of these rural lands. So we'll still provide the future potential of a residential accessory unit to, to the property owner. Uh, comments that have been received to date on the zoning bylaw amendment, uh, the Cataract Bay Region Conservation Authority uh, did send an email on March 31st uh, they'd advised of no uh, issues with the zoning amendment um, and they noted that they'd also uh, reviewed the related severance applications. Uh, as a general note, they've advised that any site alterations within 30 meters of the water course may require permitting from their office. Uh, the Township Fire Department uh, did send an email on April 6, advising of no concerns with the application. And uh, as of today, the uh, Lanark Leeds and Grenville District Health Unit uh, sent an email uh, advising of no objection to the application. These are all the comments that have been received to date. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so we'll now open the uh, virtual floor for any uh, public comments. And I guess I'll ask our uh, administrator clerk if anyone has uh, registered uh, prior to this evening. No one has registered to speak to the application. Okay, and perhaps to our deputy clerk, have we received uh, any emails uh, during the uh, the explanation uh, with regards to this public meeting? No emails have come through. Okay, fair enough then. So we'll consider that there are no public comments uh, at this meeting then. Uh, so just for everyone's information, the zoning bylaw amendment matter will be coming before the township's planning advisory committee at their April 15th meeting uh, for their consideration and recommendation on the amendment to come forward to council. So at this point, I will now close the uh, public meeting and I will move into the regular meeting of council. And in calling that uh, to order, I will note again that this meeting is being held virtually and available for public viewing on YouTube. That's part of the public participation. If you have any questions regarding items on tonight's agenda, please submit them by email 
to mail at ektwp.ca. Questions received prior to the meeting will be addressed during the public question period, which is limited to 15 minutes. At this point, I'm looking for a mover and seconder uh, to adopt the agenda. Uh, it reads that the regular meeting of council meeting agenda of, Mar of uh, sorry, April 12th, uh, 2021 be adopted. Uh, moved by Councillor Edie, seconded by Councillor Brayton. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you very much. Uh, I'll now call for any uh, pecuniary interest with regards to any item on tonight's agenda. And if so, could you please st state the nature thereof? Okay, seeing none then, we'll move on to uh, the adoption of the minutes, looking for a mover and seconder to adopt those. Moved by Councillor Predijon, seconded by Councillor Renault, that the regular meeting of council meeting minutes of March 22nd, 2021 be adopted. Any comments, uh, corrections, questions regarding that set of minutes? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you. All righty, we have no delegations this evening, so we'll move straight into staff reports. Item 6.1 is a report regarding the service delivery review update. I'm looking for a mover and seconder to receive that report. A move by Councillor Smith and seconded by Councillor Linton that report number A-21-21 be received. I'll now open the floor for any discussion. Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, this one's in regards to the recommendation 3.2.1 of the salary grid and job description review. I agree that the job description review should be done. Uh, my question to Madam Clerk through you there, um, is this being reviewed by township staff or is this being uh, completed through a human resources consultant firm? Uh, feel free to, to go ahead, Madam Clerk, since you're off the, uh, the screen, I can't see if you're nodding or putting your hand up or what have you. So uh, feel free to respond to questions as they're directed towards you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The intent is for a third party to do the review. Uh, generally speaking, um, it's, it, it's just better than having staff review their own salary level. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, okay. The next one, uh, the worship is, um, there's, um, there's been a lot of discussion during the service delivery review in regards to a recreation master plan. There's been a lot of discussion here at council and also at the, public, at the uh, recreation community of the whole meeting uh, regards to recreation services. So I'm just wondering, um, should that not have been considered uh, as one of the services to be reviewed? So I'll turn that over to um, uh, Madam Clerk to uh, re refresh us on whether the consultants uh, took a, a closer look at that in the service delivery review and any insights you may have. Um, it was one of the recommendations that were, um, were mentioned by the, um, the consultant who did the service de delivery review. Uh, right now, uh, what staff were looking at as part of the, uh, this report was a lot of items that uh, would take technology to be able to implement uh, on a relatively um, quick basis this year that would provide us with savings in not only money, but also uh, staff savings. So that's what we focused on this year. That may not be what we will focus on. Well, of course we won't focus on next year. And we'll be looking again to continue on the service delivery review recommendations. There are 72 of them. Yeah. 72, yeah, I believe it's 72. So it, this is going to be a number of years that we're gonna be going through them. Uh, we just thought the automation was one of the big points that we need to get done now in order to function better. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any other uh, comments or questions, uh, Council? Okay, so I guess I have a question for you, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, it indicates that you're seeking uh, Council's instruction uh, to proceed on the above noted uh, projects. The motion simply meet, uh, reads to receive the report. Um, do you wish to have a formal motion uh, around any or all of these as a group or uh, just simply um, Council's concurrence? I'm seeking Council's concurrence to start moving forward on these 
particular recommendations at this point. We'll, we'll be reporting back to council on a fairly regular basis on how things are going. So we'll start with these. Okay, very good. Everybody comfortable with that uh, council? Good, okay, thank you very much. I'll call the question on receiving the report then. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on to item 6.2. Uh, this is a report regarding a property uh, vesting option. Uh, looking for a mover and seconder to receive uh, this report. Moved by Councillor Renault, seconded by Councillor Edey, that report number 21-36 be received. Uh, Madam Clerk, did you have anything you wish to add before we start the discussion? Um, just, just to make sure that, that it's understood, uh, we have no uh, ability right now to do anything with this land until the municipality decides whether or not it will vest the property into its ownership. And the underlying thing is, is that if that is to occur, it is recommended um, that a environmental study be done on that property just <coughs> to cover the municipality's future uh, liability issues. Okay, just before I turn it over to uh, uh, council, just by way of uh, providing some, some information for the discussion, uh, do you have a sense, Madam Clerk, of uh, what such an environmental study may cost us? I, I'm sorry, no. Uh, I've not ever been part and parcel of, of that, so I don't have an idea. Now, having said that, the cost of that environmental uh, service can be added on to I guess if, if the township is going to sell it, add it on to the purchase price. Um, if they're going to invest it, then we're, we're the township's absorbing the cost if we're going to keep it for ourselves. <coughs> okay. So um, any discussion, Council? Councillor Smith and then Councillor Renault. Go ahead, Councillor Smith. Um, thank you. Uh, since there's been uh, no interest through the uh, municipal tax sale on this property, and there has been some interest from a community group in Jasper who wants to revitalize the hamlet of Jasper. I think this is a great opportunity to uh, perhaps assist with this uh, revitalization of the hamlet. The, um, the land could be used as a parkland for the residents in Jasper. Uh, there's some benefits to this property for the parkland. And the uh, benefits, in my uh, view, is uh, it's a dead end street. It's a, a low volume of traffic. There's ample parking on Jasper Street. And it's a very quiet area. In regards to the option to donate the land to Habitat for Humanity, it's also a good gesture, but I'm not sure if the land is large enough to build on. And as uh, Madam Clerk has already stated, I had a, a question in regards to the environmental um, on that property as well. But uh, I'll let uh, Councillor Renaud speak and, and then I, I'll have a recommendation coming out of all that probably at the end. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Renaud. Oh, you're muted, uh, Councillor. Yes, wondering, did we not approach the landowners on either side of this piece of property because it's not that large a piece uh, if they wish to buy it and add it to their property. If I could speak to that, Mr. Mayor, um, municipalities have to go through a very open process to be able to um, get the, sell properties with the exception of anything in an industrial park. Therefore, there has to be some sort of open uh, procedure in order to sell the property. We can't just gift it away um, per se. Uh I wasn't suggesting gifting it away and I wasn't suggesting skirting any rules, uh, but a, a definite email or phone call to the landowners on either side, telling them that it's up for tax sale. I'm wondering if that happened because I, if it's the property I think it is, then I know the person that is on both sides of it wants to buy it. It doesn't work the same way as a, um, a road allowance closure where the two property owners on either side or the property owners on either side get the first option to purchase it. This is a, this is a lot of record that um, 
our, our planning, uh, our assistant planner may correct me if I'm wrong. It's a lot of record. It has a foundation on there. It is a buildable. If we are selling land under the Municipal Act, it has to be an open and above board process that needs to go out to the public, such as what we did with the old Jasper School that used to uh, be held by the township. We listed it with a real estate agent. The real estate agent dealt with any offers that were coming in. It, it's just not quite that simple. And we've had it up for, for tax sale. It's not in tax sale now. What it is is in the, the time period where the municipality has the option to vest or not. I believe there's been two times that we've set it up for tax sale and they failed in both cases because the outstanding amount was way in excess of, of what anybody would be willing to pay for that lot. Now we have the opportunity. We either forget about vesting it and just let it lapse again, or we vest it, sell it, keep it. Okay. okay. Any follow up, uh, Councillor Renault? No, that's fine. Okay. Any other uh, discussion, Council? Okay. Um, I'll just, I'll, uh, yes, go ahead, uh, Councillor Smith. Uh, no, if you, if you want to speak, go ahead. I just have a recommendation, that's all. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thanks for the opportunity then. Um, yeah, just to let council know that um, the uh, the option to, or, or I guess the suggestion option, whatever you want to call it, to donate the land to Habitat for Humanity, uh, caught my attention only because there have been similar discussions uh, around the county's council table. Uh, and I guess uh, a number of other municipalities have done this at least once. Uh, some are actively seeking uh, to do it again. Some have already done it more than, than once. Um, so I can see a day coming where, where we would stand out as one of the exceptions. Right now, I think we're still in the, in the majority. I won't say that the majority of the lower tiers have uh, gone ahead and done this yet, um, but everybody has expressed an interest in, in trying to look for these opportunities. Um, so if the lot is too small, then, then fair enough, it's, um, it's too small. But certainly I think uh, regardless of whether we look at vesting for a park or vesting for a possible donation, um, I think before we can sort of make those types of decisions, we need to know what the cost involved uh, is for an environmental study. Because if it's horrendous, I think that that might push us in a different direction. If it's something palatable, um, then I can see us perhaps moving forward with uh, vesting uh, and then making a deci decision on the best use of the, uh, the property. So I just thought I would fill in council on uh, what's going on with habitat around the, around the region. Thank you. Uh, so I guess if there's nobody else, I'll, uh, I'll turn it back over to uh, Councillor Smith. I think you, oh, sorry. I see uh, Councillor Brayton, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the environmental study would be, uh, would be mold and, uh, it wouldn't be oil or gas or that kind of stuff. That is part of, part of the areas that they would be anything that um, anything that would contaminate the soil that may raise a uh, an environmental concern in the in the future. The reason why it's suggested that we do that is if there is anything by any slight bit of a chance there, and the township vests the property, which means that the property then is in as ownership, the township's name, 50 years down the line, if something goes bad on that property, um, oil is found, gas is found, a chemical is found, the township, even if they've sold the property 25 years before, it will come down to the municipality having to fix the problem. A prime example of that um, is slightly different, but. Um, the township of Beckwith dropped off garbage at a private waste site within their municipality. Uh, now it's got to be close to 70 years ago and uh, they are still on the line for the cost associated with the contamination of the groundwater due to this old waste site. That don't seem really fair. No, it doesn't, but that is, where the deep pockets, municipalities aren't going away. They're, they're going to be here in a hundred years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just wondered because I didn't think there was any gas or uh, anywhere near there. And, and there wasn't any, I never heard tell of any in my time, any, any uh, oil spills or anything like that. I just wondered, okay, thanks. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, so I guess over to you, uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, so I'll put a recommendation that council uh, vest that retains the property for either parkland or for habitat for humanity uh, with the environmental study to be completed. Okay, um, so are, am I to interpret that as a, as a motion? Do I need to be seeking a seconder then, uh, Councillor Smith? Uh, I would say yes. Okay, so I'll entertain a seconder if there is one. Okay, uh, Councillor Brayton seconded, thank you. All right, so now we can start the discussion on that and I see uh, Councillor Renault, go ahead. I, I don't think we should have it so prescriptive. Um, best it, yes, put it up for sale, yes, but I don't think we should uh, limit it to Habitat for Humanity. It, I think it should just be open to anybody that wants to buy it. I think it would be. Um, well, uh, so uh, back to you, uh, Councillor Smith, uh, for, for clarification on, on your uh, motion. Uh, Madam Clerk uh, had her hand up. That's what I was just getting your attention. That's all. Oh, okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk, go ahead. Uh, I, I actually took a little bit of liberty on the wording on this one. So I wrote down that Council invest the property for township purposes following the completion of an environmental study. And it's just township purposes, it's very generic. Council can then sit back once they, um, well. They can make a decision after. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once you receive, we'll do the environmental study now, you can vest it into the township's name, and then a future decision can be made regarding. What to do with the problem. Uh, yeah, what's mm -hmm. going to happen, if, if that's sufficient. I, I'm okay with that, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And I'll uh, turn to the second. Are you okay with that, uh, Councillor Brayton? Yes, I am, yeah. Okay, great. So that seems to address uh, your concern, uh, Councillor Renault. Um, any other comments or questions at this time? Okay, I just have a um, have a, a question. It stems back to a, an earlier question that I asked. If if we go ahead uh, and support this this motion, and and I like the idea, um, but my little voice is telling me that uh, it probably would be prudent to find out what kind of dollars we're talking about spending on the environmental study first. I would hate to find out that it's fifty thousand dollars for the environmental study when there's only 30,000 left you know, on, on the taxes or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna to turn to Madam Clerk and ask, uh, what is the timeline for vesting? How much time do we have left to exercise that option? I believe it's in the fall, October or early November. Okay, so that there would, would be time then for staff to, uh, to get an estimate on an environmental study so that uh, uh, council could be making an informed decision on this? Absolutely. That's why we brought it to you now rather than in later on in the year. Okay. We'd like to proceed with a, with a study. We would like to be able to have the time to do so. Okay. Uh, so I'll turn back to the mover and, and seconder and, and ask, do you still want to pursue the motion as it was presented at this time? Or do you wish to defer that? Or how, how do you want to proceed? Uh, as a mover, I, I would proceed the way we uh, have it right now. Okay, and uh, Councilor Brayton, you still second that? Oh, sorry, I, I missed that, Councilor Brayton, I'm sorry. Sorry, yes, yes, yeah. Okay, all right, fair enough. So uh, one last call for any discussion and then I'll go ahead and call the question. Okay, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? And opposed, if any? Okay, that does carry. Okay, thank you very much, Councilor. Um, actually, I guess I committed a small uh, faux pas. I still had the motion on the table to receive the report and we dealt with another motion while that was still live, but no harm, no foul. Uh, so at this point then with uh, that discussion wrapped up, I'll go ahead and call the question on receiving the report. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you very much. Okay, we will move on then to uh, committee reports, which we receive as a, a block. So I'll read the motion and then I'll look for a mover and seconder to support that. The motion reads as follows. That the following committee meeting minutes be received. Committee of Adjustment of March 11th and 17th, 2021. Bellamy Park Management Board of March 24th, 2021. Heritage Elizabethtown Kitley of February 25th and March 25th, 2021. Planning Advisory Committee of March 18th, 2021 and Elizabethtown Kitley Public Library Board of March 24th, 2021. 
So I'm looking for a mover and seconder uh, to receive those blocks of uh, minutes. Moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Smith. Any comments or questions with regards to any of those sets of minutes, Council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you very much. Okay, there is a, a motion coming out of the um, uh, Elizabethtown Kitley Heritage uh, Committee. I'm looking for a mover and seconder that council supports the Elizabethtown Kitley Heritage Committee in hosting the 2022 Ontario Heritage Conference. Uh, moved by Councillor Smith and seconded by Councillor Eady. Any comments or questions on that? Okay, uh, yes, Councillor Reno. Is there a dollar amount that would be needed for them hosting the, the uh, conference or is this what? Uh, well, yeah, I was gonna say, perhaps I'll turn to our uh, council rep on, the, on that committee. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you, thank you for your question. Uh, no, uh, there is seed money um, that is uh, put up front uh, through the Ontario Heritage and the registration for the conference uh, basically pays for all um, uh, essential for the, for the conference. So it's a break even uh, and there should not be a cost to the municipality whatsoever. Follow up. Do we know why Brockville backed out then? Um, no, I, I really don't. Um, they started the the process and then when COVID kicked in, uh, the city of Brockville, my understanding, um, has stopped all uh, committee meetings. And so their heritage committee has not met. And so Elizabeth Town Kidney has, uh, has taken on the role and uh, is looking forward to uh, hosting the uh, 2020 conference. Thank you. Very good. Any other questions, Council? Okay, I'll go ahead and call the question then. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you. Okay, we do have um, a motion coming out of the, uh, the pack as well. <clears throat> motion reads that severance B24-21 for a new lot at 6210 Foster Hall Road, owner of Gadziola, subject to conditions as detailed in the minutes on page two be approved. Looking for a mover and seconder. Moved by Councillor Predijon, seconded by Councillor Smith. Any discussion on that uh, severance recommendation, Council? Okay, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you. Okay, we will move into our bylaw section. Uh, we do have first and second reading for a number of bylaws. I'll read the, uh, uh, the operative clause of the motion and look for a mover and seconder. That the mover be granted leave to introduce bylaw number 21-16, 21-17, and 21-18, and this shall constitute the first and second reading thereof. So mover and seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Brayton. Any discussion, Council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you. We'll move on to a third reading of those same bylaws. Before I do that, does any member of council wish any of these bylaws to be pulled and voted on separately? Yes, Councillor Brayton. Yeah, um, 2118, does it have it separately? Okay, so you want 2118 voted on separately. All right then, any other requests, council? Okay. So then uh, I will read uh, the motion for the other two. We'll deal with those and then we'll deal with uh, 2118 on its own. So I have the motion that bylaws number 21-16 and 21-17 be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered accordingly. All those in favor? Okay, that carries. Thank you. All righty. Uh, so now I will uh, put the be looking for a mover and seconder to put the motion on the floor for third reading of 2118. 
And that motion would read as follows, that bylaw number 21-18 be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered accordingly. I'm looking for a mover and seconder to get that on the table, and then we can have a discussion. Moved by Councillor Eady, seconded by Councillor Renault. Okay, so I'm going to uh, assume, Councillor Brayton, since you wanted uh, this voted on separately, uh, that you have an issue or a comment or uh, something that you wish to address Council uh, about? Uh, no, I don't have an issue, but I, uh, I think that uh, maybe I should have left it alone, but maybe it's true, but uh, I recommend that, that uh, they have added to their, uh, their many things that you know, five days or six days or whatever it is there to be added to, to their day of operation. So, so you're in in favor of them adding these days, Councilor Brayton? Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Okay, fair enough. And so, did you wish this to be pulled and voted on separately because you wanted a recorded vote? I'm just um, just trying to understand the rationale if you're supportive of uh, why we voted on this separately. I just didn't want it uh, to maybe slide through the through the boards and then wouldn't be. Uh, wouldn't be uh, brought to anybody's attention, wouldn't go through. Okay, fair enough. Any other uh, comments or discussion at this time before I call the question? Okay, all those in favor? And that's everybody, so that carries. Thank you. All righty, uh, so moving on then uh, to the next section of our agenda, that brings us to correspondence. We have four items of uh, correspondence. Uh, all of them uh, are recommended to be received and filed, so I am looking for a mover and seconder uh, for that motion. Uh, moved by Councillor Renault and seconded by Councillor Predijon that correspondence items one through four be received and filed. Any comments or questions uh, on any of those items, Council? Yes, Councillor Smith. Uh, for you, for yourself, uh, Mayor Burrell, regards to uh, 9.3, um, when is your next uh, modernization meeting taking place with regards to the uh, fire services review at County Council? There's been no uh, set date at this point. Uh, we are trying to find uh, a date when all of the members can be present. And we're also wanting to be sensitive to providing some time to get some feedback from the, uh, the lower tiers. Uh, after giving them a chance to uh, to read the fire report, so I'm going to say I don't anticipate one within the next three weeks, but probably in the in a three to four week time frame, uh, I, I would suggest that that's probably what would happen. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Any other questions on the items, Council? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor? Okay, that carries. Thank you. All righty, uh, so we do have an informational item regarding the uh, Mud Creek uh, Bridge Notice of Closure uh, from May 3rd to August 31st. Uh, and also uh, there was a media release regarding the uh, trade scholarship, which the township has just recently introduced. So I'll draw those to uh, people's attention, especially those who may be watching the, uh, the council meeting. Does any member of council have any other information items that they wish to share at this time? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on then to item 11, motions and notices of motion. Uh, does any member of council have a notice of motion? Uh, Councillor Predija. Um, I'm not sure if this work comes in or not, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, but the uh, employee assistance program, did we ever vote on that to do anything with it? So over to Madam Clerk, I don't believe so. Uh, we did receive a report uh, on it. I know that um, council had directed staff to do some more investigating and they had come back with uh, another option for us to consider. Um, but I'll turn it over to Madam Clerk to perhaps fill in any, uh, any blanks there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you're absolutely correct. We did go, we did the original report, asked for more information. We came back with a second report and council received and filed it with no direction being given to staff regarding that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, back to you, Councillor Predijon. 
uh, is now appropriate to to move that that they go forward with it or bring it back to council so we can vote on it or what would be appropriate here? Yeah, what you can do if you wish is um, you can provide notice that you intend to introduce a motion at the next meeting uh, to do just that, to introduce a, an EAP. And under those circumstances, this is the ideal place to do that. Okay, well, I'd like to put a notice of motion that we will go back to the EAP and have a vote on what was drafted by staff in their second presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Any other notices of motion, uh, Council? Yes, Councillor Smith. Uh, Madam Clerk, got her hand up. Yeah. Oh, okay, sis, go ahead. Just for a, um, a process uh, point of view, Councillor Pretty John, um, I'll drop something up and let you take a stab at it just to make sure I've, I've, I've we get the right wording for that motion. Sure. Thank you. Great. We've got to get you, you a camera of your own, Madam Clerk. No. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I don't believe there were any other notices. Oh, yes, uh, Councillor Smith. Um, I know we're not supposed to uh, discuss anything underneath a notice, but with, with regards to this notice, this report was given to Council twice, and Council basically filed it. So I'm not understanding why we're bringing this back to the floor, or or why is it even a motion now when Council had twice uh, filed the reports. It was our opportunity at that time to uh, direct staff or provide direction or whatever, but we basically just filed the papers away. That was probably three months ago. Yeah, you're correct. And so had we had we discussed a, a motion and defeated the motion, then, then yes, I would see your point. We would have to go through reconsideration and uh, what have you. Uh, Unless I'm uh, corrected procedurally by uh, our administrator clerk, I believe that just because the uh, council received a report uh, doesn't necessarily preclude it from soaking uh, on that report and then choosing to take action at uh, some future date on, on any of the inf information that was presented. But uh, I'll turn it over to our administrator clerk for some clarification on that. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, um the intended motion will have to be very different from a receiving of the report uh, that would so the new direction would be to either approve it or not or turn it down so that's where we can get a different direction on it okay thank you uh, did you have a, a follow-up uh, councillor predator john yes i did i just uh, think that Maybe three months ago, I'm not sure if it was three months ago or not, we might have been hot and heavy in some other discussions. And I think this may have just slipped through the cracks, in my opinion, for what it's worth. It was something that we didn't feel was enough in the first one. And the second one looked good. And then I don't know how it got received and filed, but I would like to see it brought back up again and put a motion forward that states that we are going to enact the uh, EAP program. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so obviously we'll have a, a debate at that time and then we'll have a clean end to it. It, uh, it will either fly or it won't and then we'll have that behind us. Okay, uh, one final call then for uh, any other notices of motion at this time. Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll go uh, to public question period and I'll turn it over to our deputy clerk. Have we received any uh, emails at this point? I, I, I'm going to speak to that one. Um, okay. Did we receive an email? Uh, it was from uh, Dan and Vicki Downey. This letter is for the April 12th council meeting. Open letter to Mayor Burrow and council regarding this year's budget. First question is, why is the $115,486 item added into general government account, uh, which changes this account budget by 18.3%? Why does this amount consist of, what does this amount consist of? There is no explanation. The second question is because of all the expenditures you and the majority council have agreed on, you want to borrow over and above the amount required for the fire station instead of increasing the tax rate to cover these expenditures. By borrowing the money to cover these expenditures, you keep the tax rate around 2.5%, which makes this municipal government look good but this is a sleight of hand on the residents of the township who may not be as engaged in the whole process as we are. 
in the long run, the residents are at the mercy of changes this council is making. Can you explain why you do not raise the taxes instead of borrowing dollars? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I can answer that first question. Yes, the, uh, please go ahead. This, this is a summary of the $115,486,000 increase. First was wages and benefits were increased um, to, to include the, the permanent tax collector position as well as CP, CPI increases. Council laptops were authorized uh, of 14,000. New facility contract personnel was included in that budget. Um, reduced bank interest of 40,500, which took away from our revenues. Insurance expense increase of $7,000 and other miscellaneous items of 200, decrease of 224,000. This was provided with the budget update on March 8th. Uh, 8th. Um, they were presented as part of our director of finance presentation. Interest reduction and increased insurance was also noted, noted in the original release of December 14th. Um, this information will be provided to the request to the questioner uh, tomorrow by email. I leave the second question to council. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I can certainly take a stab at the uh, second question. Gosh, there's a lot of feedback. There we go. Uh, yes, so there are um, there are a few things with regards to uh, to the borrowing um, from the the nature of the question. Uh, it didn't sound to me like there was any objection to the borrowing for the fire hall, and I guess uh, one of the reasons for that maybe it seems obvious that we need a fire hall. Uh, so we can apply the same logic to the sand dome, and that's the other major project that we would be uh, borrowing for. So in order to complete our uh, winter control operations, since we will, we will be losing uh, the use of the uh, county's sand dome, uh, they just simply do not have room for us in their future operations uh, for us to house our material there anymore. So we need to provide our own sand dome. Uh, and that's just as important in its own right as a fire hall would be uh, in being able to continue our uh, winter control operations. In terms of a, of a sleight of hand, I'm going to take a little bit of license here simply because uh, at least one of the authors of the open letter uh, has sat on, on previous councils. So if, if we're going to start down the road of comparing uh, one council to another, then since you pay attention, you'll also know that uh, we have uh, talked about the condition of our New Dublin garage uh, as one example and how previous councils have known that uh, it was in a, a state of repair that needed attention uh, and yet didn't direct any funds towards that and didn't carry out that work. Uh, so that's something now that has landed in this council's lap to, to deal with and has contributed somewhat uh, to our discussions. I could also point to uh, the compactor at the waste site. Uh, previous councils have known that it was on its last legs uh, and yet uh, only at the very last minute started to put money away in reserves uh, to purchase that in a timely manner. And unfortunately, that old piece of equipment didn't last long enough uh, for you know, the four or five years to tick by while the reserves were built up. So these are the types of things that previous councils have less uh, us to deal with. And rather than unfairly burden the taxpayers all in one year with the cumulative effect of those things, this council felt that it was appropriate uh, to spread that out over future years. And finally, there's a philosophy in municipal budgeting that takes a look at if you, if you save ahead of time to do something, then that puts the entire burden of a future project on the existing and past taxpayers who may not be around to benefit from its existence. If you borrow in a prudent manner, then that puts the burden on the taxpayers who are still here paying their property taxes and who are benefiting from the use of, for instance, a salt dome or a fire hall. So I, I think that uh, council had a very robust discussion uh, around uh, this year's budget. Uh, and I don't think that we have turned to borrowing indiscriminately and we have done so in a year where the interest rates are historically low. So I stand behind council's decision. Any other uh, questions, Madam Clerk? No, sir, none. Great, thank you very much. Okay, so 
I have a motion uh, in front of me here that uh, the regular meeting of council adjourn to a closed meeting of council at 7.47 p.m. I'm looking for a mover and seconder. Moved by Councillor Renault, seconded by Councillor Predijon. All those in favor? Great, that carries, thank you very much. I'll uh, give our administrator clerk a moment to uh, stop the uh, live stream.